Okay, so welcome to the third part of this set of videos on how to draw a meerkat. And what we're going to work on on this one is uh, to build up the fur texture. Now, what I'm going to do is use a, a few things to do this. So we'll run the intro and then we we'll get into the drawing. So the first thing I'll do is run through the materials that we'll use for this. Uh, first of all, uh, two Caran Dash pencils, 2B and a 9B. Uh, 9B, as I said in the previous episode, I generally speaking only really do that at the end of a picture and add it in. But what I'll do for the sake of this and showing things, I'll incorporate that in at this stage. But it's up to you. It's There's no right or wrong. It's again, whichever way works best for you. Uh, blending stump and we also have the 9H Crescent Colour Pencil, Putty Rubber and also to one of the other things to create the fur texture is going to be the dart which as you can see is just a normal dart, it's been reshaped on the tip so as it's not as sharp it just doesn't need the, uh, the flights in it. The only other thing we need is a piece of scrap paper to practice the texture on. I wouldn't go straight into the picture with this. Um, if it's a new technique to you, I would practice on a piece of scrap paper first to do this. Um, with the engraving, you need to, to see how hard you need to press. And the only real work, way to do that is to practice it. Now, before we start to work on the picture, the thing I want to do is to look at the reference photograph and look at the different types of fur texture there are in there. You can see there's very short, fine fur around here. It gets a bit longer and then you go down to this really long fur that's all down around this area just here. Okay, so to show you what I'm gonna do, um, first thing I'll do is, in some of these areas they're quite dark, and I basically need to brush a little bit of tone into there because if I was to apply, say, the texture first to those areas, then as I work over the top with the 2B, you can see it leaves harsh white lines behind. And if I now use the 9B, it'll just exaggerate that and some more. So for any dark areas, we need to put a bit of tone in there first. We can get away with this because we can use the blender to, to basically push tone down into the grooves, but it just makes life a lot easier to put a bit of tone on the paper first of all. Okay, so the 2B pencil, as you can see, is still blunt. And basically what I'm going to do is now start to um, sketch in some of the darker areas that there are on the meerkat. So what I'm going to do is I look for the direction that the fur takes. And then, for example, just under the, the chin, I'm just going to freehand in a bit of tone with the 2B. And again, this will start to give it a bit more shape. Again, if you wanted just a sketchier look and you didn't want to bother with the engraving, you can just use literally use this without it for a less detailed, more sketchy look to it. So this will basically provide an under texture. 
and then as I start to work over the top with the engraving and then a bit more 2B and so on it will start to give it more shape and more form and then the detail will start to come out now as you can see we've got some like little whiskers that go across just over the dark part in the ear just here so what I'm going to do is just work around those for the time being and just leave a gap for them so as you can see by just uh, leaving these little whiskers here um, I can then come back into those later and then do them more detailed at the minute all I'm doing literally is just starting to get a little bit of texture and a little bit of tone in to then work from and again this little whisker goes across here so again I'll just leave a gap for it So you can see I'm being quite random, putting the tone down. But if I do feel I've made a mistake, again, I can just simply just use the putty rubber by rolling a point. And if I wanted to take a little bit of tone away, I can do quite easily. Also because of the area I'm working in, looking at the texture of the fur is quite spiky and short, so I'm just using short strokes. So because the pencil is blunt, I know I can still erase it if I need to. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of 2B into where the nostril is. And I'll use a little bit of artistic license. I won't put the sand in, which is stuck to the end of his nose. And just around this area, I'm just literally gently just brushing a bit of 2B on because I can then let the grain of the paper then help the bit of skin texture that there is around the, the nose area. So this stage is just literally about getting some rough texture in there very loosely with the 2B and then when we engrave a texture over the top we say for example the Dart or the 9H then it will really start to give it some depth now I'm being a little bit careful to work around the little whiskers that there are on this part just in here don't have to be a hundred percent accurate for this I'm literally just leaving a few little gaps just to to add some in a bit later and again the fur that's on this part of the face is very short And remember to always look for the direction that the, the fur takes. And I can always use the putty rubber just to, with that point rolled on it, I can just use it just to alter things slightly as I go okay. 
Now at this stage the tone will be quite even because just remember it's just literally just a, an underdrawing. And again the texture will just go in over the top. Again this part is relatively quick to do. But unfortunately when we get to actually putting the, the real furrow texture into it, it then slows down considerably. The nice thing with this is you can use a fair degree of artistic license. Um, you're never going to replicate this 100%. You know, so the fur will get moved around and blown around. As long as you've got the rough direction right, that's the main thing. There are some patterns which really stand out in here. Uh, like, for example, this down here. This is really, really nice. And I'll concentrate on that quite a lot also the patterns that are within here but for any of this you can make changes to it end of the day the photograph is what it says uh, it's reference uh, we can change stuff as much as we like as long as it uh, as long as it looks realistic now with this photograph it, it it is quite lucky that everything does seem to like for example the eye and the nose they they all look really nice but quite often our change eyes and various bits of the animal just to, to, to change how it looks. So now getting towards the bottom of the picture. But like I said, it's just, just builds that bit of shape into it. And then as we start to apply our texture, it will really start to bring it to life. But always look for those changes in directions in the fur, like you can see on this part that I'm working on now. You can see I'm leaving gaps where tufts of fur stick out on the edge of his arm. Just being a bit careful not to get too close to the edge. And then, like I said, this is a really nice bit. Lots of patterns and textures going on. So... Just always remember to be quite random with this. You don't want to be uh, too neat, too tidy. Uh, remember, you don't want him to look like he's been brushed. All the hair's got to be nice and tangled and rough. So just finishing this bit off. And 
and that now gives a good base for the uh, texture to go in. You don't really want to spend too much time working on on this. I've put it all in. Generally speaking, I'll just do a little bit and then a bit of texture and then a little bit. But just for the sake of this video, I've just put this in just so as you can see how this will build up. Okay, so to learn to do the engraving, what we're going to start with is the, the dart. And what I'm going to do is draw some texture into the paper. And the way the light's catching it, you can just about see that. So you can see the strokes are very tangled. Also as well, remember, you don't want to push the dart forwards as you'll drive the tip into the paper. And then basically what I do is then with the 2B pencil, I just brush tone onto the paper like that. And you can see the patterns starting to emerge. So you can see I'm being quite random with the pattern that I put in. And I just literally just do just a, a little bit with the dart. And then I just switch over to the pencil. And just slowly continue along just a little bit at a time. So you can see quite a random pattern, making sure that it tangles over each line. So again, still just using the 2B. Now I can quite happily work over the top of the 2B that's already on the paper because where the dart is metal, it won't pick the tone up and drag it like a pencil. Now equally as well, if I want to just highlight an area, like say just the there. I can just brush a little bit of tone away with the putty rubber. Again, just using a point just to take a little bit away. And that just builds. A bit more of a highlight into it. Now this is a good area to start with because it is so random with with textures and directions that the fur goes and also as well where it's the longer fur it's actually in a little way a little bit easier to to do as such to start with the thing to do if you do find that it doesn't look right is to not go back over it do a do a different bit and then eventually go back to it towards the end of the picture now you can quite easily overwork the paper if you continue to go over something just practice and then when you're confident with what you're doing then you can go back and make corrections to stuff
Again, always looking for direction changes within the fur. And in some places, the fur goes in all directions. So main thing to remember is it's a combination of two things, the engraving of the texture into the paper and then how you work the pencil back over the top. And that's what gives the effect. Because we're engraving into the paper, it's best to work on a hard surface for this. You don't want to work on top of another piece of paper as the engraving won't transfer down properly. So you can see why it's such a a long process and remember we're still only using the 2B pencil at the minute. So if I do apply a 9B, again the same as we did when we were working around the eye, anything I put a bit of 9B onto I then just take the two just to finish it and spread it and you can see that just puts that last little bit of contrast in there. Now remember I said normally what I would do is work on the picture and then do this at the end. But like I said for the sake of this video I will do it as I go. And there we have it that's the basic texture that we've started to build up that's a good bit to, to work on now what I would say is uh, don't just do a little bit on a piece of scrap paper and then go to the picture really do practice it on the scrap also as well just do a little bit of the engraving and then a bit of the pencil it's very easy for two things you'll get complacent with what you're doing and the the, the patterns just won't be random It'll all look too neat. And the other thing as well, if you spend too long engraving, then basically what will happen is your, your hand will start to ache from the engraving. So just do little bits at a time and just slowly build it up. And remember, don't expect it to look right to start with. As you can see, now I've started to build an area up. It's now starting to make more sense. Okay. So next week, what we do is we'll start to build in the rest of the fur and the different types and the shorter fur. Plus also we'll use the 9H pencil as well around parts of the face where the fur is much shorter and finer. Uh, we've also got to put the whiskers on as well, which we'll then start to work on as well next week. So hopefully you found this useful. And uh, please remember to, if you have enjoyed it, to like and subscribe as that really helps the channel out. Um, as always, there are links below to the materials that I, I use and uh, hopefully see you next week.